welcome to our second week in the Psalms. This week uh, we, were, we were looking at hymns, psalms of, of praise and hy- hy- almost hymnody uh, last week. This week we're moving on to something that's perhaps not as um, enthusiastically welcomed as uh, those last week. This is kingship psalms, royal psalms, and they can be quite challenging for the way that that we view things. But we well, stick with me for the five days and goodness only knows what we're going to come up with when we write our own. Psalm number two from the New Living Translation. Why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle and their rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break the chains, they cry, and free ourselves from the slavery to God. But the one who rules in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then in anger, he rebukes them, terrifying them with his fierce fury. For the Lord declares, I have placed my chosen king on the throne in Jerusalem, on my holy mountain. The king proclaims the Lord's decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Only ask and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. The whole earth is your possession. You will break them with an iron rod and smash them like clay plots. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, you rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Submit to God's royal son or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities. For his anger flares up in an instant, but what joy for all who take refuge in him. So like I said in the introduction, it's quite difficult uh, to think about these uh, royal psalms, these kingship psalms, because what we will find as we go through is that a lot of them are saying how wonderful the king is, how wonderful the king's rule is, how great they are and how, you know, all those things at work and I think that we can just bring our immediate reaction of we don't believe that God you know chooses and appoints our leaders or that any leader could possibly live up uh, to what is in the Psalms and during the week I hope we can unpack some of those feelings because they didn't in Israel either, okay? We know that they didn't. We have writings that tell us how awful the kings were. We, you know, there's, there's lots of nuance about uh, kingship. Uh, so we can we can read that and try and understand and wrestle with it a little bit. And then we can hopefully look at how that helps us think about rulers and leaders and you know, potentially the politicians and those in authority of us today. Like, what is our Christian relationship with people in power and authority? So, this is Psalm 2. Now, right at the beginning, a lot of times it's supposed that we should read Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 together because they're like an introduction to the whole theme of the Psalms. We read Psalm 1, and so we now have Psalm 2 here. And interestingly, isn't it, because it's saying, oh, the world is not appreciating God's sovereignty. But little do they know that God has put, you know, his own king on the throne, this king that is going to bring everybody into right relationship with God through military power. Hallelujah. But then right at the end, it makes quite abundantly clear that there is that 
that it's not the case. It's aware that though it's almost saying that they will make, uh, the kings will make this rule of God come. At the end, it says, oh, woe to those kings who don't. Because if you don't do what God wants of you, if you don't take your kingship and use it um, appropriately with justice and good authority, then God is going to take you off the throne in the midst of all your activities. So even in the Psalms, and I think it's something that we find really difficult to understand, that in the Psalms, you, you have it written almost as though it ought to be. So the king ought to bring justice ought to be but it but it phrases it as though that were the case so the king brings honor and glory the king is always just and always true and then right at the end it's going oh when the kings aren't true when the kings are doing things wrong god will take action and woe betide anyone that gets in the way of god so you see how that works it it it's almost like the two can't can't co you know co interact, but they do. That's the way the Psalms work, and so and we have to be attentive to that because otherwise we read it and we, we we can't escape from this view of kingship is not my view of what a king or a ruler is. That um, yeah, we'll we'll see that unpacked. So that's my introduction for today. I hope that you're still with me. I hope that you are excited for looking at something potentially that you've never looked at before. Because some of these psalms you definitely will have not heard read on a Sunday morning. So let's pray together. God of all creation. We know that you are sovereign. You are in charge. You have ultimate authority. And yet within the world there is lots and different power structures. There are lots of different uh, places and people who, who control our daily lives and control the lives of others. And Lord God... It can be so easy to become disenfranchised, to just see our faith as existing in a separate place to that power structure of the world. Lord God, we pray that as we think this week on how we relate to authority and how you relate to authority and what the Bible has to say, that you would keep us humble and attentive to your word, attentive to your Holy Spirit speaking to us, so that we can learn from this week and we can hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.